Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger, what up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you're all beat. So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe while we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, scream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Gekenders. We're back. We're back again. Poses, poses. Our lovely poses. guest today is Nick Terhorst, um, who has uh, has done so many things. is an amazing artist. Um, has done a bunch of animations, has uh, worked in the comics industry, and is now a tattoo artist. Uh, just insanely talented and a lovely friend. Thank you so much for joining us, Nick. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. We're happy to have you. I was saying. Oh, are, we doing, are we doing voices? Yeah. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Let's I all really do the whole show in this your, movie. Your I could. <laughs> oh, thank you. I could do the entire thing just like this, oh. and it would be great. Oh. So Question. If, yes. if, that, if those are our voices, we have to have new names. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Dodger. Your name is. Do the voice again. Uh, it's me. Hello. I'm here and I'm ready to do a show called Gekenders. Your name is Fluff Stuff. Fluff Stuff. I'm Ooh, great. Sounds good. It. Right, right, right. Okay, okay, okay. And, uh, my name is Glorbo. Okay. <laughs> yes. And Nick, what's your right. voice? What's your voice? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, I was just doing like, I feel like we're all variations on kind of the same voice yeah. a little bit, think, uh, which is what I like about it. Here's my pitch. Are you ready? I think your name should be Bebopper. Ooh. I love it. All right, great. Fluff, Fluff, Gorbo, and Bebopper? That's, <laughs> That's a, good a good group. Okay, now we just got to change everything over. Yeah, we just need an adventure to go on, dude. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. Yes, absolutely. Like <laughs> Our adventure, we have to find, like, the lost button. Oh, like, my oh no, Fluff, Stuff, Lost Button. Are we button. tiny? Oh, oh my god. Are we tiny. like borrowers? Okay, we're borrowers. Wait, is this like Tiny Heist? Are we playing Tiny <gasps> Heist? Right we're now? Tiny Heist. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. We've we've sorted it. This is what we're doing today. I love it. Very, very happy with this. This is yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. You know what? Jesse and I both popped into this with with news that we wanted to talk about, <laughs> stories, but we're discarding we're, we're that now. Characters. We just go. need a DM. <laughs> I our DM for Hellions is in chat right now. Yeah. We just need to get them in here. <laughs> We're doing a borrower's one shot right now. Amazing. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. <laughs> and podcast done. We've done it, everyone. Done. Oh. Uh, All right. I mean, it would be very on brand for me to just come into a room in it for to turn into a D and D session. Yeah. <laughs> like... That's. I guess that's an. That's a thing that I forgot to throw in there. Is yeah. D and D aficionado. Oh, yeah. Nick uh, yeah, Terhorst. Yeah. D and D fan. Yeah. Uh draws pictures of OCs every day, Nickter Horst. <laughs> Literally. I love it. My life. I love it. Uh, it's so beautifully self-indulgent. Yeah, it's great. Oh, yeah. I, I turned 30 and I was like, oh, cringe doesn't exist. <laughs> I can just draw my OCs all the time. And then I never stopped doing that. Yeah. It's great. I just want to stress to everyone, the older you get, the less you give a damn about that kind of stuff. I was it's invited amazing. on... Over the years, I've been invited on a lot of other people's shows, and a lot of them, especially on Twitch, are like uh, played for goofs, and play, like someone invites you on, and the whole thing is like they're goofing on you while they invite you on, that kind of stuff. These days, I'll show up and be the most honest, 
like true human being ever. And they'll be trying to goof and I'll be like, it's really hard out there for creatives trying to get started today. But I just want to let you know, if you just put in all of yourself, no matter what you're doing, it and they're just like being goofy. I'm like, wow. So this is how you chose to do this, huh? This is this is what <laughs> this is the vibe. Just, this is the vibe yeah, you chose yeah. to show up with today. <laughs> no, you you throw it back on them, and you're like, and, oh, everyone so this in is chat, ironic to you. Everyone yeah. in chat is like cringe, and I'm like, life cringe is, is dead. I am free. I, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. You you can't hurt me. I I can never be cringe now. Yeah, I'm like I'm above you. Yeah, I yeah. care not what the 14 year old thinks. Live your life. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. Like, ah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's cringe to call it cringe. I, I, a, a fully, 100%. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wear it like armor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just saw the topic change. Cringe is dead and I am free. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. <laughs> you can't cringe me in any way that matters. <laughs> yes, that's, that's I, the shirt. I've been trying, I've been trying to figure out a way to say that for that, like, uh, you can't kill me in any way that matters, oh, like yeah. mushroom Tumblr post. But yeah, that's that's exactly the the vibe. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. If you <laughs> backed up right now with the with the shirt you're wearing, if you backed up right now and it turned out that it just said that in like sketchy letters, it would. Oh my god! I I have a print at the shop that says like I am cringe, but I am free with like a little that. cutie that's emo wearing like a band shirt. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of uh, the exact same wavelength, I <laughs> love. Dodger's hat because it says so much. It says trying really hard, but it's also covered in cat hair, which is really funny. <laughs> it's not cat. Oh my god, it's not cat hair. Are you ready? Wait. It's sheep wool. <laughs> oh my god, this is my life now, <gasps> which is a perfect segue into my yes. story. Yes. Jesse, are you ready? I'm so, I am not, but I'm so excited to tell you about this. I'm pretty sure I told okay. Nick about this already, but maybe not. No, you probably I, should have saved it for the I, show. All I heard was um, was you being like, I don't think I've told Jesse about this yet. And <laughs> I was like, I have also not heard about this yet. So I am tuning this whole conversation out because you were like, I'm going to bring it up on Geek Enders. Oh, like, my gosh. Are you ready? We had a Jesus lamb. <laughs> what? We had a Jesus is, lamb is, on our farm. What, is that, what does that mean? We bought a sheep, and one day it was suddenly pregnant and had a baby. We have a Jesus lamb. You only have one sheep? We have two adult sheep and two lambs, and now a third, a baby, a third baby sheep. I mean, two adult sheep is all you need. They're all girls. Every single Yo. one of them is girls. <laughs> Yo, it's a modern day miracle. Where, where did the Jesus sheep come from? We called the lady that, that bought the sheep from, and she was like, this has literally never happened. I am so confused. And the only thing that they can say is like, maybe a ram broke out and just boned a bunch of sheep and then went back into the ram enclosure. They literally don't know what happened, but now there's a concern that there's a bunch of sheep that they've sold that are pregnant, potentially. Um, wow. But yeah, uh, her sheep was just suddenly pregnant and had a baby. So. so is this a good thing? You got like an extra sheep? Yeah, it's buy one, get one, dude. Yeah, that's, pretty, <laughs> that's a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah that's, that's half off. And <laughs> yeah. we really wanted the, the sheep to be named Jesus, but we've been informed that I guess in, in like livestock breeder society each like gen of animals has a name that starts with the same letter i don't i don't know why i don't know if it's like an organizational thing or just for goofs but um so so the lamb's name is lucky it's very cute oh that's cute it's that's little, still cute it's a little baby i would call him little jesus <laughs> little jesus little jesus yeah <laughs> little jesus. i was talking about it with manda and manda was like le jesus and i was like le jesus <laughs> is also very good <laughs> no 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 l-i-l g little, Z -U -S. little, little jesus, jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah you're welcome little jc i would love for that to be written on official forms <laughs> On little collar. Yeah. Oh my gosh. 
Incredible. Next time it gets. It should have been it, little JC. <laughs> oh, man. When it gets oh, sheared, nice. we'll shear a big J into it. Be like, what does it mean? <laughs> it's like a crop circle, but on a sheep. <laughs> isn't, isn't this the plot? Maybe not of that A24 movie where she's like, it's a lamb, but looks like a boy or whatever, a girl. I mean, he's, Huh? Isn't that a thing that exists? That just made me One think of, those... of the eraser baby. It sounds, it sounds like an A24 movie, but <laughs> it, it is not what A24, I've heard of. Like one of those, like, is it a horror movie? Who knows? Here's a child with a lamb face. Like, that's a thing. It's a film called Lamb. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're correct, apparently. I watch a lot of weird movie trailers. I don't see the movies. I just like, the trailer's enough for me. I'm like, okay. That was enough. I'm good. <laughs> I don't need to see how this ends. I'm pretty sure it's going to be awful. I kind of, so. I kind of avoid trailers now. Oh, I, I am a, a lot of trailers just tell you the whole no story. trailer watcher. Yeah. yeah. I, if I, I have like intention it. of watching the movie, mm. I won't watch a trailer. Saves yeah. me time. I'm like, all yeah. right, yeah, no, I get it. Mm. The killer. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. Definitely the killer. Yeah. I guess there could be something really fun about watching the trailer for like a thriller movie and seeing if they try to red herring you in the trailer. Like that guy did it. See, that's the thing though. Cause I feel like that was, uh, it, <laughs> the movie that made me decide to stop watching trailers was ex machina. Mm. Um, oh. sure. Because I was watching the end of the movie and there was a scene that I had seen in the trailer oh. that I had been waiting for literally the entire movie hoping maybe it was a red herring or something uh but it wasn't it was just literally probably like five minutes from the end of the movie and that's that when i was like you know what i don't need these anymore <laughs> sure i'm yeah. free There's... i'm free <laughs> that's the I'm theme free. of this whole podcast i'm free now <laughs> i'm free now i'm free i don't need it anymore yeah. there was something i was watching or playing i can't remember what it was but i remember i knew it wasn't over, even though they did like one of those, like it's over, but I knew it wasn't over because in the trailer, there was a scene that had not shown yet. Mm. And I was like, mm, yeah. that's going to happen. It, all right. So, and yeah, you're absolutely right. Sometimes they're like, we'll show you something for the last 10 minutes. It's like, don't do that. Be like, um, yeah. M Mad Max Fury road or whatever that movie was where the trailer was the first 20 minutes of the film. Yeah. Like the trailer was only from the first 20 and you're like, yo, this movie's be fire. And then it just kept going after all the scenes you saw. And you were like, oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. more yeah. of that, please. Yeah. Or like, or like comedies where they show you like all the good jokes yes. and you're like, but I wanted to see them in context. Yeah. Right. I wanted to, I, I'm not going to laugh as hard now knowing that that joke is coming when I start seeing the setup. It's true. Like, yeah. I keep thinking about the way they marketed the Lord of the Rings trilogy, knowing how the end of the first movie is and the beginning of the second movie. And they were just like, that character died, but he's in all the promotional material for the second one. You're like, if no one understood that. Right. What would, how did that, how did people react to that? Like, I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea if you were just kind of like a, <laughs> an average Andy loving, like I thought those, Two hobbits were so cute together. I can't wait to see what adventures they go on. <laughs> can't wait to see them kiss. I can't wait yeah. for those little hobbits to kiss. On a mountain, mm. I think. I'm not oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. A really hot mountain. Yeah. Um, a lot of kids' movies either make trailers that make the movie seem like something that it's not, like elementals, or uh, they make a trailer that literally shows you everything that happens in the movie. There's a mm -hmm. movie that came out uh, called like My Life as a Teenage Kraken or something like that. <laughs> so of course we had to watch it. And uh, when I tell you every single thing that happens in that movie happens in the trailer, I was like, why? Why? Why did we need to do that? And I don't know. No. Sorry. No, like study wise. Mm. Apparently, uh, according to all the stats and all the information available, the more you show in a trailer, the more likely people are to see the movie. Which is why so bad weird. movies almost always show you everything. Because I guess it's one of those like, well, I know what it's about, so they won't surprise me. Huh. Yeah, it's just apparently that's the thing that a lot of people are like, I can take my kids because I understand. Or like, I won't get... Yeah. 
jump scared by a thing. Like I know what the movie is, mm. which is crazy to me. But yeah, yeah. It, it's a thing. <laughs> I was like, I feel like I might just have a problem with like modern media. <laughs> Yeah, like like Marvel movies and stuff. I'm like, I can't, I can't. Like, I'll check in once in a while, but if you want me to do homework to watch a movie, I'm not gonna do that. It's mm. got Marvel specifically has gotten so yeah. out of hand at this point. Oh, it's it's gotten insane. Mm. There's just too much. It's it is now having the same problems that the comic books have. Yes, uh, which Ooh, is, that is the realist. So true. Uh, yeah, which is like no one knows where to start anymore, or like what you need to do or whatever, and it's like. Yeah, that was like the reason that y'all kept rebooting things, and now you've done it again. Mm. <laughs> Start from zero sometimes. Yeah, like, they're actually the madness behind them being like, okay, so the whole plan is the next two phases will lead to a reboot, but also they were received so poorly that we're going to reboot the reboot <laughs> by recasting or re like. What this it's madness how anyone can be like hype for anything. I still remember a post credit scene where Jon Snow and Blade were like, Yo, let's go save your space girlfriend from space. That was the thing that happened, and I cannot believe no one has said a damn thing since. That that was a plot point, dude. That was crazy. Mm. There's a man in the ocean still. <laughs> Ain't nobody talking about the man in the ocean. Huh? Somebody is. You are. Yeah. Me and like three other psychos on the internet who are like, why is no one saying it? He's right there. Like, <laughs> he's in the ocean. Why is no one talking about it? I feel like I'm a conspiracy theorist. Um, yeah, I feel completely out of the loop at this point. There's, there, I, there's yeah. too many things to watch that I don't care to watch. Yes. You know? <laughs> So it's not like it's not like it feels like it would be fun to try and catch up and know what's going on. It feels like it would be a job, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's a job I don't want to do. Mm. Mm. So it's yeah. The more you tell me I have to watch something, the more unlikely I am <laughs> to what? engage with it mm. at all. What's crazy is they made TV shows to be like supplementary expanded universe stuff, where it's like we have TVs and like you can watch you know, WandaVision and get like, oh, that's fun. Yeah. Now, if you look at the trailer for Deadpool 3, it's literally like, hey, did you watch two seasons of Loki? If you didn't, you'll probably be lost. Oh, like, it's God. like, why Why are we really? doing this, guys? Yeah. Is I don't want to spoil anything for trailer. People don't watch trailers, but <laughs> there's a lot of Loki season one and two stuff in there, and I'm like, uh, well, how the thing is, is like, Loki season one, Fun, f fun until like the end. Until the end, I agree. Uh, yeah, and so Loki season two, I'm not watching that. Yeah, I don't even know if it was good. Season two, uh, season two is equally as fun. I, the see, ending I might was, be one where you're I like, was gonna okay. say my my partner was like, it's fine, like all the way through, and then the yeah. last like, or no, the not the last episode, but like the second and third last episode, he was like. This is amazing. And then the last episode happened. He was like, oh, it's, it was. Funny. Oh, no. That's the worst. So it's like there were like two episodes where he was like, I, I actually think that this is going to go somewhere that is fun. Uh, and then he was like, they, it didn't. The, <laughs> the biggest problem with it is that it does hit that. Um, there are some like really great moments in season two. But the problem is, is that it feels like they just ran out of time and or money. So the last episode happens, like, everything happens so quickly. And there's, there's no time to let anything kind of, like, sit. It just happens. Mm. And so it's yeah. like, we were doing good. We were doing good, y'all. We were doing good. And then it just kind of, like, is real yeah. fast. Some cool stuff happens. And I'm pretty satisfied with the ending. But it's also just like, we could use two more episodes, y'all. We could use two more episodes. Mm. And it, it sounds like the kind of kind of time budgeting that, like, probably could have taken some of the time from some of the previous episodes to give us those two episodes too right. which i find like pacing <clears throat> to be like my biggest complaint with like modern tv right now where it's like it'll luxuriate on like the wrong things for me mm. instead of like the stuff they take time on is the stuff you're not interested in yeah 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 like yeah we we noped out of 
discovery like 20 minutes into the first episode of this season like the new star trek um oh, I, and i mean I've, i'm so I've behind been, like, on discovery but uh, oh don't <laughs> strange new world don't waste your catch time up. Just strange catch new world is great Worlds, amazing i started watching uh, don't, that on your recommendation uh yes discovery well, well, time I, out. what i've been recommending it, it took nick to nick, do that i've been over here nick recommended it before you dude false false you're a liar <laughs> from my as, town as soon population as it came you. Out, i i was i was like nick immediately was like hey fucking watch this uh, if you like star trek you should watch this yeah, specifically if you like like old Star Trek, yeah, that and Lower Decks. Lower Decks, killing it. Like um, the Lower Deck, uh, Stranger Worlds crossover is awesome. It's perfect. awesome. It's perfect. It was, yeah, it was great. perfect. It was great so episode. good. And like, talk about a franchise where you can fucking jump in anywhere. That's what I love because <laughs> there are these like overarching plot points, but every episode is like a little, a little like a little, you know, and maybe it's a two parter, and then you only need to watch the part mm. before. It's like they even they even nailed <clears throat> the oh boy, here comes the frog. Hello everybody. Hello, hello. Uh, hello. Oh, new characters. What are these <laughs> names? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, Keep going. They're all frogs. They're all frogs. <laughs> they're all frogs. <laughs> um, in season one, they nail the because there's always like the Star Trek, well, we're in a fairy tale, like that kind of thing. They yeah. nailed that episode so well by just being like every character, we're just gonna cast them as their polar opposite. Go. And it's hilarious it's, it's so, so well done i cannot stress enough great show discovery i'm just constantly let down by Con yeah, i always yeah. am like please be good please be good and they're like and you're like we've it's decided so to shiny. do something insane and you're like it's so shiny and it looks so nice yeah. and like there are so many really talented actors in it that i i want i want to like it and i don't i really I just, like, don't at all i really loved the first season going into yes. totally blind i adored the first season and then it didn't take that many episodes of season two for me to go okay i'm kind of bored i'll come back to this later and i just never came back yeah. and everybody says don't bother which is so sad because i liked the first season so much the, yeah the, like, there's moments of awesomeness in it the problem is is that they're always undercut like, I don't remember which season it was, but I was, like, really into the idea of, like, oh, these weird anomalies. And this, like, angel thing shows up. And, like, what is this going to lead to? And the end, the payoff was so terrible. It was so <laughs> bad. <laughs> no. And then the one where it's, like, all warp travel has ended. I'm, like, okay, this could be interesting. Let's get good. And the payoff of that was equally terrible. I was, like, I hate this show. I hate this show. <laughs> I hate this. Like, I just want to yeah. shake the writers and be, like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Literally, like, I... And this is like episode one. Like I like I said, we didn't get more than twenty minutes in, so I'm not going to consider this to be like spoilers. Uh, but they were like like episode one of this. They're like, we're we're discontinuing your special drive on your special ship, and everyone's like, oh man, what a bummer. And then not tw twenty seconds later, they're like, we need your special ship, and I'm like. I why would you even waste time being like we're not doing this anymore yeah, <laughs> like just what? let them be the only one just like it's fine the tech hasn't come up like caught up yet like you don't have to explain away the fact that they're like ending the whole program and blah and they spent like minutes being like i just don't know what to do with myself now like what i'm just gonna like rest on my laurels as a scientist blah 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 right everybody and, like and mourning the loss and then it not mattering and at like, all we need you specifically <laughs> you and you're the only people who can handle this and i'm just like I'm going to scream, dude. <laughs> this is how I feel about Picard season one and two. Where it's oh, like, it was so disappointing. The entire thing is just like, we added things for no reason to have them there for no reason. And yeah. the first season did not like it all. Second season, yeah, I was either. like, yo, hold on. I stand Q. Let's go. Q, the first two episodes of season two, I was like, all right, this is it. They finally found it. And then they were just like, dive it was nonsense the rest of the way through and i'm like what the hell is happening thank god i loved season three i was a lot I was of people like, okay. did yeah i was gonna say season three was like something made for the fans mm -hmm. like and it shows and hilariously they were like even in the show just like yeah no none of that stuff in season one or two really happened except for one plot point the rest of it ignore it yeah. ignore all that but sadly that one plot point was still insane but whatever <laughs> You know, whatever. It's fine. But I enjoyed, Something had to carry over. Like yeah, it felt like Star Trek, and it felt like a we're gonna say goodbye to this crew, and we got one yes. last ride. And I was like, okay, 
this is what I'm here for. We should have been doing this for the last two seasons, guys. Right. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I ask? Can I ask you a question that's like kind of adjacent to the Marvel discussion, Jesse? Mm-hmm. The how we were talking about how like it just it just doesn't feel like um you know it it is worth it to try and catch up on all the Marvel stuff to know what's going on. Does it kind sure. of, as a, as a, as a not star Wars person, does star Wars kind mm. of feel like that? So, um, first off, by the way, worst coffee I've ever had. Anyway, I just um, saw you drink it and be like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> how is it like water? It, all right. Anyway. <laughs> um, so there was a time period and I think Disney tried to do this, which is all right. But so if you listen to shout out to the Star Wars old canon book club, wink, as we're going through all the old stuff for Star Wars, we finally hit the 80s. And um, there was a period from like the late 70s, early 80s, where was, Star Wars was crazy. Mm. And it was the three movies and then like a few books here and there. But then there was nothing for a while. It wasn't until Heir to the Empire in the 90s that suddenly there was an expanded universe. And from that point on, it blew up. And the expanded universe became huge. There were games. There was all this different stuff, new books and tie-ins and different things. And that was huge until they made the prequels. And the prequels were like an oh, entirely new thing. And then it changed stuff. And then it got even bigger. And then Disney, when Disney bought it, was like, okay, there's a lot of years of lore there. We're scrapping all of it. And the <laughs> only thing they kept was the original movies, the prequels, and I think like one or two books that had just come out right before they bought it. Well, they some, scrapped everything else. Some of some of the old canon books didn't like align on canon anyway, right? Or did they? Um they, so George Lucas was pretty smart in that he said um any stories you tell cannot be 40 years after or 40 years before because his in his mind trilogy one he, he wanted to do nine movies all the whole time so it's like trilogy one which is one two and three would be 40 years before and then four five six would be where we have it in the middle and then 40 years later would be uh, I seven eight nine okay and so that was kind of like his vibe and um then they kept uh, oh they they kept clone wars and rebels true they did keep they did keep the shows that were on disney channels <laughs> Wink. I'm shocked. Um, so yeah. yes, that, that did happen. Correct, chat. Uh, so all the stories took place, unless you're talking about like the comics. The comics, there's some stories that take place 10,000 years before where you see like the first Jedi and stuff and they have like laser backpacks. and That's cool as shit. That XR Kun and like all those dudes, that's cool. as That's awesome. But um, then Disney stepped in and was like, uh, oh, and Lucas said that you can make stories in that like time period 40 years before right. and you could do like heir to the empire which is a couple years a year after return of the jedi something like that so you can do like those things but you can't uh you, you can't mess with the bigger picture and so thankfully he did that so there wasn't anything too crazy that was like lore changing it was just so much had happened in the books like characters got married characters died characters had kids like planets were gone so there was so much stuff they were like nah scrap it and so they completely removed all that from the canon. But then what Disney did, which is what they've done with Marvel, is make it equally complicated. Right. So yeah. there was a time period where if this was 2005, was, when did, no, it wasn't 2005, 2000, when did the first, when did, 2005 is, I think, still prequels. Uh, 2000, it is. Time has no meaning. Because I think the last prequel came out when I was in college, so it must have been around there, yeah. Yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, what, what, 2015, I don't know, one of those years, whenever episode seven came out, whenever, I do, I'll be honest, I don't remember these names, I don't remember the names, of, I remember Last Jedi, but I don't remember, I don't remember what it was called, uh, Star Wars, The Force Menace, right? Uh, so Awakens. Anyway, yes, Force yeah. Awakens. Yeah, there we go, we got so, there, we got there, we got there, we got there. I have not watched these movies. The the new ones, I haven't watched them more than once. They they're so disappointing to me. But um the uh the they started with that, and that was gonna be like this new moving forward thing. And then as they kept adding more, so it'd be like, okay, well, we're gonna make um you know Rogue Rogue One, which I love that movie. I thought it was super fun. But they're like, also, here are six books that align with Rogue One. Like one of the books literally was right. about uh, her dad 
and like why he calls her Stardust, and it's mentioned once in the movie. It's like nonsense stuff. So they kept releasing things that would add on to the movies. So now you have, before we're even five years in, there's like a ton of additional content. And while you don't need it, you then, it all sort of funnels into the point where we hit Ahsoka, which I think is the last thing that released. Ahsoka, which is, I was like, all right, it's fine. I'm here for Thrawn. I stand this. This is interesting. But really, it's just the final season of Rebels. And if you have no context for any of Rebels, I don't know how you enjoyed any of that show. Because right. it is like, we're not going to wait for you to catch up. We're just going to keep moving forward. And what's crazy about it is even though it was like forward momentum, that show went nowhere. It was like characters here, characters here, and at the end, yep, and that's it. Nothing else happened, and I was like, I guess Thrawn was cool. <laughs> Meanwhile, shows like Andor slap are so good. Apparently, Andor is amazing. It's the only one that I want to watch. It is the uh, as I'm sure you know, our dear, dear sweet boy Davis absolutely cannot handle Star Wars right now. He hates it. <laughs> Yet we sat him down to watch Andor, and he was like. That's the best thing I've ever seen. I was like, <laughs> I know, right? Oh. So okay. it's a, that's that's selling me on it a little bit because yeah. I I am at that point. I'm just I, after Mandalorian. I was just like, you could have just let them be a, a dad and a little guy. <laughs> no, that's what dude. that's what sucks about like right? I feel I, I just I didn't want I don't want a big thing to happen. Yeah. I just want to be a dad and a little just, guy. Yeah, just that, a dad and a little fun. guy. That's exactly what I wanted that show to be. Yeah. That's the that's the problem is like it seems like everything they're doing with Star Wars is about yeah. like well maybe we can make a new lightsaber color at the park. Like it feels that way. Yeah. Because everything is Jedi and it's like, yo, it's a universe where like Jedi are super rare, dude. Yet they always show up every five minutes. They're like, yo, what up? I have a lightsaber. And it sucks and it's so infuriating because Andor is a show, not a force user to be seen. Yay! And it is <laughs> perfect because it's like yeah most people i feel like star wars forgot what star wars is and it's like it's a setting it's not it, a, yes a, a, exactly anything can happen there you can have a heist movie you can have a romantic comedy you can have a mystery i was so hype on the idea that they were like all right we're setting the new star wars series in the high republic and it's about it's a murder mystery where a jedi detective has to, i'm like okay this could be fun the entire trailer is lightsaber fights i'm like uh boo yeah Upsetting. I I forgot how upsetting that show was <laughs> until you like we we watched the first episode and we were like you cannot expect a child actress to carry this TV show and she is on her little tiny back and I'm not watching that. Could could she was really good. Could have had Star Wars Glass yeah. Onion, dude. I, Obi- like that would have been fun. Obi Wan blew my mind because it was like, how did we have? All of these actors, and this and, is the story you chose to tell. Oh my God, Sam and ranted so about bad. that when he was watching it. He was like, "How did they fumble this so hard? They fumbled it so hard. Yeah. It was crazy." It sucks. The last two episodes are cool, but it's like because it's Who's all fan. That? Like, yeah, it's all like cool fan stuff. But if you look at it as a whole, it's not. It's a nonsense story. It's like, why did we? We had so many opportunities to tell so many good stories, and this is what we did, bro. I don't. I I have come to the conclusion that, and I don't want to pan all Hollywood writers. I love you. Many of you are very good. I am part of the WGA. Ding. But oh my god, he's so cool. A lot what of a lot of Hollywood writers exist in a world of I'm going to make it my own, so that they can say I made that rather than I told that story or I I sure. took the book and tran like it is. I'm going to change it so that it. My credit is, and I hate, oh, I hate that. But at the I end of the that. day, something like, something like Obi-Wan, there's already so much that exists of Obi-Wan. Like, you don't and have very have much wiggle room. There, there's yeah. so many comics that are just like tales of Obi-Wan living in the desert, doing his thing. They could have done so much with that and give us like, this. you want to know how that man aged in the desert? He had to protect a little boy without that little boy knowing. And shit goes down in that desert. Like, there could have been a whole thing of him being, like, a badass mm. for six episodes that weren't, like, every Inquisitor in the universe is looking for him. And he's going to have to fight Vader. He's going to have to, like, 
all right, cool, but there's so much more we could have done with this. Yeah. 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 Like, if if they have force ghosts and weird stuff, Hayden Christensen could have just shown up and been like, I sent you, Obi-Wan. Let's have a chat. I would have loved them just talking more. Like, the <laughs> yeah. idea of... There, there's you, a, want, a, you want Star Wars Slice of Life. Yes! I no, I do! I genuinely do! <laughs> there is There is a... um. Terrible book. I don't recommend it because they say it's canon, even though it shouldn't be. But it's like a bunch of writers writing uh, for like the 40th anniversary of the original Star Wars, like writing their like little short stories, which some of them are amazing. And some of them are uh, Palpatine writing poetry. So just giving you the dynamic of what this book is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's but you, you say that that's bad. And I, <laughs> I feel like Dukes is like also like, I'm going to read that. <laughs> like... It yeah, is, it's yeah like, like I'm like I want to read that. <laughs> it is fun to shoot at minions. <laughs> Look at them yes. run! <laughs> like, Amazing, dude. Yes. Ama- yes. No, yeah. you can't convince me that's bad. I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> um, <laughs> we just yeah get but, worthy kids to just animate that, yes, and yes, I'd exactly. watch that shit for hours, <laughs> and I would be so happy. <laughs> There's all right. If that if if you into that, then let me tell you. Yeah. This, you know how in the first movie when they're in the 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 like trash pit and the little creatures down there, it has been retconned in that book so that the creature <laughs> sensed Luke's force powers <laughs> and knew the Death Star was going to explode, so it was trying to save Luke by pulling like trying to save him from the explosion <laughs> because it was like this guy's going to be important. That is a thing that is. And huh? then they had the audacity to be like these aren't just short stories we wrote for fun. This is canon, y'all. I'm like, no. Oh my god. Don't do this. So not everything needs to be canon. <laughs> right. Right. But anyway, there's three short stories in there that are by different people, but they're all Yoda and Obi-Wan just talking. Like one is Obi-Wan in his cave. One is Yoda. And they're just literally like, oh boy, what are we gonna do about this? Like, and Yoda's like, I think that girl is probably a better candidate than than Luke. He seems like an asshole. And Obi-Wan's like, I don't know. He could be the one. She, and he's like, I don't know. It's it's just them talking shit. And it's like, before, it's like through the story of the first movie, but it's like after he dies, Obi-Wan shows up in like Yoda's little hut. And he's like, oh boy, this is a mess. <laughs> it's oh, awesome. oof, dude. I love it. It's so good. Big oof, like, guy. I'm dead, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, this is what I'm here for. I want more of this. And Yoda's like, oh boy. <laughs> it's so good. Someone said they should do cheers, but in the cantina. And I think yes, that would great. be amazing. Be so good. <laughs> I would watch the shit I mean, out and, of that. And no one from any like series you've ever seen shows up. No, no one. No one. Not important. even in the background. No, <laughs> no. I've n- I never normies seen normies only. <laughs> yes, yeah. normies only. I want more just in the universe that's not related to anyone's plot. And if it if it takes off, don't fucking do anything. Don't touch it. They're all it normal. Is- it is so yes, infuriating to me that in every show and and like every piece of media, almost every, for some reason, either R two or C three PO show up, and it's like there are billions of droids. How are they always present? Uh huh. Like half the galaxy doesn't even know who these guys. More than half, they don't know who these people are. Why would they be like, oh, like wh- what? Stop! Um, you can't be everywhere. Yeah. When, uh, kind of an offshoot of what Nick was talking about, when we were doing Neon Divide, which for anybody listening right now is like a VR LARP, basically, um, but we would run into an issue occasionally where whatever, like, inciting incident, whatever, like, big plot thing was going on on a map, a bunch of people would just rush to that area, and we, there were a few conversations along the lines of, like, some characters are going to be run into danger characters. Some aren't though. Like it's important to know: is this character in a in a LARP specifically? Is your character that you're playing a character that's gonna fuck with whatever that dangerous shit is, or are you mm. a character that's gonna be like, I'm minding my business, <laughs> you know? And it's important to have both because it's not interesting yeah. if everybody's a run toward danger character. Can I ask a question? Have either of you done? Actual LARPing? No, like like in person. No, I want to so bad. No, I mean aside from me and my friends in high school making Nerf swords and then beating each other with them, but I don't think that counts. Aside from shit like that, yeah, Yeah, I don't think that counts. Yeah, I don't know if anyone in chat knows this, but I'm really curious because what you said 
Makes Because when I think of LARPing, I think of, like, everyone, they're getting their outfits on. They're going to go out in the forest and, like, play a thing. Hmm. But is there, like, welcome to Old Shanty's Pub back yes. at the yep. base camp? Yes. And it's like, yep. you don't have to go out and fight. Come on into the pub, and I'll be like, oh, I'm serving you drinks, I am. 100%. And then just, we'll play in I've, the pub. So I I have expressed uh, my, uh, like, all my clients know that I love doing the D D stuff and everything so like we chat about like ttrpg shit all the time uh, and i have a bunch of clients who larp and i have expressed my like i have a desire to larp but i don't really want to be like a character who goes out and does things I, I was like i think i'd be way more comfortable being it like an npc and they're like no dude like literally there are people who like just like chill in the pub for like 16 hours a day and if someone yes. says your keywords you give them a quest but otherwise you are just like serving bevies so and like taking cool. little tokens and stuff and i was like that's my vibe like i would love to do that so much <laughs> um so there's also this is reminding me in the united kingdom if you guys would ever like to join me in the united yes. kingdom there's a larp called second breakfast that is literally just a larp where everyone shows up as hobbits and it's like a hobbit family reunion and you dance and eat a lot and that's the whole larp i'm getting on a plane immediately <laughs> get over it's here dude down. like I, that sounds amazing i want to go to it so bad i look at pictures for it all the time <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. oh yeah i will point out that i have done some minor form of larping with dodger um years ago she and i were invited to a Oh boy, Witcher Three <laughs> event. Yeah, I, we, I love we, the. Yeah, and we were that, yeah. taken from yeah. Warsaw out to the middle of nowhere, a fort, and we get there, and they're like, "All right, there's there's gonna be food, there's gonna be all like there was a long house with a bunch of meat hanging from the ceiling and weird soups and things, but there was also like a woman making bread and a um like uh, like a dude blacksmithing, and there was a bar." And you, the whole thing was you have to work and earn money, and then you can use it to buy things. The problem was I um, had all the merch they had. I just bought it on my own. Uh, so I was like, what am I going to do with this money? Like, you can spend it at the pub. I'm like, okay. So meanwhile, I'm, I'm making bread, hammering nails, doing all this stuff. Our little <laughs> hobbit thief over here, I'm sitting there hammering nails, and I watch her walk up to this pile of money the man had and just take a few coins and like scurry off. And I'm like, I was, I decided I was a rogue that day. <laughs> I was going to say, that's a valid job in the fantasy I, world. I just stole from everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I played the character I would play, which is, I learned she was doing that. And I said, give me some of that money. Or I'm going to tell everyone who stole. <laughs> that's true. I bought, they had those, they had those like weird multicolored shots, didn't they? And yes. we had to buy a bunch of shots. I remember that. There, uh, at some point, I ended up oh in that God. in that like old timey. All they had was vodkas, flavored vodkas. Yes. And it was me and this dude from Germany, and we just. I was like, all right. We just kept drinking oh all night. You know what's it something that they really do right out there is when you're drinking a lot, they have huge vats of lard with bread. Oh my God, it was amazing. They were like, eat a bunch yes. of the bread and lard first to coat your tummy and then drink up, bud, and just keep eating bread and lard while you're drinking. And it we did. It is the best time I've ever had drunk. The next day I felt totally fine. I was like, they're yes. onto something, dude. I don't <laughs> drink often, but I feel like I should shit. always get lard now. <laughs> I don't know if this was real or I just was so drunk, I thought I saw it. But at a certain point, they were making mead in the courtyard, and I guess it was just a bunch of dudes just decided to make mead. It wasn't like a thing. They just decided to do it. And what ended up happening is they straight up just like were sitting there poking a pot, and I remember the guy that they had, um, oh man, mall cosplay, I think it was. I want to give him a shout out because he looked great, but he mm. was just like sitting there smoking a cigarette dressed as Geralt. <laughs> And I was like, yo, Garon on his off time looks like a badass. He was like, <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot about that. Me. Like, it was hilarious. He was so was like, chill. Yeah. That's amazing. One of, one of uh, 
I, I will say I probably made a fool of myself because I was so drunk that at one point they did like a LARPing battle. And after every scene, they'd have to have all the actors get up. And there was a guy who was hosting it and he'd be like, arise. And every time he did that, I'd be like, he's a necromancer every time. Every, I was so drunk. I thought it was hilarious. I'm sure everyone there was like, yo, this Stop. guy, <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> yep. Oh. That was a good time. Oh, oh, speaking of, of live action. Yes. Okay. Is this your news? Is this the story that you wanted oh, to tell? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, yes. we did it. We did it. We did it. We got here. Yes. What is it? Have We're either in. of you been to Omega Mart? No. No. What is that? If you're, um, there's different things around the country, but if you're in Vegas, the Vegas Omega Mart is in Area 15, which is a really cool complex, very fun, lots of stuff to do. But, um, imagine a convenience mart or like a grocery store and, uh, you have to pay 60 bucks to get in <laughs> just a heads up, Uh huh. but okay. you walk in and on its face, it's kind of like. You would think, oh, okay, this is like one of those places where influencers go to take photos, right? And trust me, it is. It one hundred percent. There's like people okay. sitting there taking photos, but oh, it's yeah. um a bunch of weird products, um a bunch of like you know uh strange looking things. You can buy everything, like almost everything you see, see in there. You can buy. It's like very interesting. And we went there because we were recommended to do this. Um, while we're going through it. I see a commercial, like there's a bunch of TV screens and I see a commercial and the commercial is like the, the owner of Omega Mart. And he's like, well, we have the freshest fruit and, be- and like corn, right? And he's like, hold and he's like in a field and it's just him advertising the produce section, right? Except in the background, there's like a little girl um, who keeps showing up in these videos with the produce, right? And she just like appears in the background. And then um, as she's, uh, like, moving closer to the guy who's doing the produce thing, he turns around and he's like, Cece, is that you? What are you doing here? And she's like, Aah! like that. And I was like, what the shit is happening? And as I'm watching that, suddenly the lights flicker, and then, like, a voice comes on, the, and it's like, you are being lied to. And I'm like, what is this? <laughs> So now what? I am not focused on whatever else is happening. I'm like, there's something else going on. There's something else happening here. So as you look around, for example, I'm not going to spoil the story of what this stuff is, but like, I'm going to give you hints. It's like at one point there's um, a, a camping section. And if you go in the tent, there's a hole and that hole leads you to a cave system. And in the cave system, there's like weird art and drawings and like strange creature things. And like, oh, you find homes of these people who are like anti Omega Mart and they have computers and you can hack into the computers. You can find um, posters that have like the layout of Omega Mart with things X on them. And if you go to those things in the Omega Mart, you can find secret things. What? Um, at one point I found a number where if you pick up, you know, like uh, clean up on aisle four, if you pick that up and dial the number, you get to the drop box where people have left like notes and shit. So you can like, okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, I was so into this that I planned to be there an hour, right? I'm like, I'll be there an hour. 30 minutes in, I'm like, oh my God, what the hell is the story here? What's going on? You can end up on a factory floor. You can end up in a corporate boardroom. This place is huge. It is so much bigger than I thought it was. And I was like, what the shit? So now I'm in. And eventually I find a guy in a lab coat. And I I ask him, like, okay, so I think I just opened a doorway that I probably shouldn't have. And I'm like, can I go in there? And he's like, ah, I see you want to be an employee. And he hands me an employee card. Now I can scan the card and get access oh my to God. different things in the. So now I'm like getting messages from from the boardroom that's like, all right, we need you to go to this one place and use your card and hack into this information and send us the files. So now I'm like, boop, I'm scanning it and I'm like sending these random people files, and eventually it allows you to like mess with the entire thing. So that thing I initially saw where the lights flickered and was like, you're being lied to. A person was another that. player. <laughs> That's so and cool. It's so good. Yeah. Is I, when I was there, like a dude came up to me. He's like, oh, Jesse, it's my birthday. It's so cool to see you. And I was like, yo, come here, come here, come here. 
hack the system. And I like, I was just like, you can do it. You can hack this. It was crazy. And then, and then at a certain point, I was like, I think I saw, I think I did all, I think I solved this. I think I did. I know the whole story. I know everything's going on. This is amazing. You can, <laughs> what's great is on your employee card, every video, except for like three or four, you can download and watch at home. So there's a lot of really weird shit to watch. And I was like, awesome. So now I have access to all that. It's like, it's so That's very so mean, this cool. whole thing. Yeah, I was gonna oh, say. Then, so cool. Then the Game Master guy was like, you've only completed 80%. There's another 20. And we only select a few people to do that. And, and he was like, tell me the story. And I like, told him everything. He was like, you seem to know enough. <laughs> Here's the mission. And oh my God, there was more to do. Now I'm like looking up barcodes. There became a point where I was running around trying to find all this information. And I watched this, this like boyfriend and girlfriend couple go around. He's like taking pictures of her. And she's like pointing at a mask or like, like posing, looking at a wall. And the entire time I was like, she doesn't know what that means. She's making a mockery of this. She doesn't understand what's happening. That I became that guy where I'm out in the Mega Mart and there's like a group of people like, oh, look, that's so weird. I'm like, they don't know what that means. They I don't was, get it. I was really hoping that you were going to say there was there was like a couple walking around taking pictures and it turned out they were plants and they were part, <laughs> they were part of all of it because that would have been there, tight. There uh, were some definite people who were plants and there were some things like i honestly i don't i don't know how deep it goes because when i was done they were like oh we're updating it and we're adding new stuff in june because i guess they built it over COVID, so they couldn't finish it completely oh, yeah. they're adding new stuff in june and then they're they're adding a whole new section uh later this um, year apparently but it was like yo it I'll give you an example of of what i, I went in expecting to do an hour Five hours later, <laughs> I left. I'm glad was, you had the time. If you didn't have wow. the time, well, it, it would have been disappointing, right? It was just like a weekend Vegas trip, so we were just chilling. Uh, but the yeah. idea was, okay, I'm gonna, we're going to go there and hang out and go see Area 15 and spend like an afternoon, right? And then at night, we go do something else. We scheduled our appointment for a Mega Mart at 6 p.m. My assumption is we'll be out by 8 at the latest. 11 p.m. we walked out. It was Amazing. crazy. I loved it. Loved it. It is so up my alley. It was a real-life ARG in a confined space. Yes. It's exactly yeah. what I wanted. I was going to say, it. it's very ARG, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, like that's, oh. That's, mm. that's, that's the shit. Yeah. That's, it is, that's it's so, so fun. Good. It's so good. I cannot, and there's, there's things like, there, if you just look and research, so like there's this giant doorway that has like a machine behind it. And like, you know, it's doing like electrical effects and there's a bunch of people next to it and there's dials and they're just messing with the dials and it's like doing cool things. I'd found in a stack of papers, a random thing. that was like, do not set the dials to this frequency. And I was like, patiently waiting for them to mess with the dial. And I walk up and I'm like, Beep! and the whole thing goes nuts. And I was like, yes. <laughs> Yes, and like doorways are opening now, and I'm like, I'm so in. I've I read so much fake lore for a <laughs> fake thing. It's all up here now. I know a story that isn't real. This sounds but like real. this 100 sounds like something Nick would go to yeah, and I'm, just I'm like, be in a hole, <laughs> getting on another plane. Yeah. <laughs> Coming Gonna to do Vegas. the whole thing in character, yeah. like, <laughs> then coming to Let's England and go. pretending to be a hobbit. Yes, you I'm are like, busy, yeah, this is, dude. You this have, is my LARP. I have things to do. I need money so I can go do random LARP bullshit. Um, <laughs> well, the hardest thing is that like you can't talk about any of it because the minute you do, it's like a, an escape room. You spoil everything. Right. Yeah. 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 So, but it's so you just have like six plus hours of shit just brewing in here now. Yeah, I, I want to take people. Like, I know, for example, Mathis would lose his mind there. Sure. Like, I want to take people that I know would enjoy it, 
But I also know that if I was there, I know everything. So either I would be extremely bored or I'd be the smuggest piece of shit who ever I was going to say, lived. then it's like when you really love an anime or something and you're like, oh my gosh, can we watch it together? And then you yeah, just wind just up like being the guy that's like- a shelf while your friends are like doing things. I hope they like it. I it out. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to- I, I hate that. I don't want to do that. But I also definitely want to experience other people- like, you know, it's kind of like teaching when a student finally gets it and you're like, oh, yeah. they got it. Oh, and you, you have that moment of like, I actually, wow, I'm so proud of you. I'm just realizing that. that you've both been teachers. That's yeah. very cute. Very different types of teachers, but you've both been teachers. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good gig. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> highly recommend. But yeah. But yeah. Oh, no, that sounds so fun. Mm. I, uh, cool. I mean, uh, meanwhile, the the rest of Area 15, by the way, super cool. There's like a weird uh, sound and uh, uh, like light exhibit from the group from Blue Man Group that's called Infinity, and it's about like questioning infinity. And then there's a, a brain scan thing that like finds your brain, <laughs> and I want to say it nailed all of us. We all got, but it was also just vague enough that it definitely could nail everyone it's like who ever horoscopes. did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was fun. Um, there was a 420 art exhibit that they were black. <laughs> it was like reggae, but like lights. And then you put on glasses, and it made the lights warp and stuff. And that was fun. There's like a thing where you can fly around. There's a bar that takes you up into the air. Um, there's all there's like a bunch of restaurants and like clubs. It's it's a fun venue. I was like. This place is pretty cool. This it's it's definitely a like go on a Saturday, waste your whole day kind of vibe. It's cool. That's fun. That's fun. Yeah. Sorry, Dukes, I was interrupting you. That's okay. Um, I don't remember what I was gonna say, but oh, okay. So area fifteen. Chat. What I think. <laughs> chat. Let us know if you think uh, Jesse's story about Omega Mart or my story about the baby Jesus lamb is better. Okay. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Yours is more of a miracle. Mine yeah, is yeah more yours is more of a legitimate mine, miracle. That yeah, happened around Easter, story. dude. What are the odds? Yeah. Whoa. You I know. didn't say that. <laughs> I mean, it's near e it's cool. near Easter right now. It's currently near Easter, yeah. yeah. It is. Little baby Jesus lamb. Damn. Um, I, you know, yes. I, I wish that we like lived in times where someone would write about that. You know? The like, baby Jesus lamb? Cool. Oh, baby Jesus. oh, I oh, see. to like submit to your local paper, uh, like not a baby talk, Jesus, a, a little miracle, right? Yeah. Like, like, like yeah. seeing the Virgin Mary and a piece of bread, sort of thing. We don't yeah. do that anymore. We There's don't. no Weekly World News yeah. anymore. Or there'd be like a little opinion piece being like, "Lamb of God found at local farm." <laughs> <laughs> Lamb of God. You should. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, there is um there is an old lady that comes by sometimes that works for a local church because we live in a little like hamlet. Um she works for Gotta a local church lamb, and she <laughs> yeah, she prints out um little like brochures about what's going on in all of the other villages with of course a big thing that's like also you should come to church sometimes. Um so I should tell I should I should email her and be like, "Yo, we have a Jesus lamb." I just I'm see sure what she happens. Not find that uh, upsetting at all. <laughs> She'd love it. <laughs> I mean, she would simultaneously, I think, love it and despise you calling it a Jesus light. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> but I do think you should do it. I think I, it might depend. Well, Is it a slow month or not? You know, it, it, I think. Does she need something to it, fill the pages? It might always be a slow month. <laughs> it is always a slow month. Yeah, it's a lot of repeated I think you might be good. But, she, but I think she's very cute. So I always say, thank you very oh, much. Very and when sweet. she says you should come to church, I go, thank you for the invitation. And then she drives away. That's what I used to say to my friend who used to invite me to church. And I did go once. And I was like, oh, man. I'd ask what kind of church. It was... One of the ones where they do a lot of singing and dancing. Mm. It was actually kind of a vibe. It was Pentecostal. Okay. okay now, yeah. here's the thing. I might show up for that. I want my... I like, want... It, it was kind of chill. <laughs> yeah, I need my preacher sweaty. I need my... <laughs> Lord! Yeah, yeah. Lord! Like, I need that. 
that's, I would that's, show up every Sunday. That was fully what was happening. And I was like, okay, like, I can vibe with this. I knew. I'm hot with the Holy Spirit. Feeling yeah. it tonight. Yeah. I want that. Yeah. That's, that's my, that's, I would go to that. I would be in the, I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be dancing. I'd be singing. Every church that I know near me is like, no, are we all singing about boring things? I'm like, it's either it's that. It's 2024. TikTok's ruined me. I can't, I can't do this. I don't have the attention span for this. <laughs> it's, it's either that or it's the pulls up a chair, turns the chair around, sits on the chair. Hi, guys. I want to rock talk with you about Jesus Christ. With a guitar. Yeah. Bring, Bring, let's yeah. talk JC. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my kid, my kid got a uh, Christmas mass really talked up to her, I guess. And so she asked Sam if she could go to Christmas mass and Clark was er, not Clark. Sam was like, I mean, I guess. Sure. Yeah. I'll take, you know, sure. So he, t- so he took her and number one, she was bored the whole time, which we probably could have guessed. And number two, they tried to like involve the kids with like the, like story of christmas and all of that um and when the pastor couldn't pronounce her name properly she yelled at him so that was her that was her church experience (laughs) what did he think clark's name was clara she was like my name's clark and he was like ah and little clara here and she was like no my name's clark (laughs) he was like okay and then (laughs) The way that Sam tells it is that he was definitely trying to move on. And she was like, if you know what it is, why didn't you say it right? Like really digging into him. And he was like, you can go sit down now. <laughs> Which is so good. Good kid. Yeah. Good I, hell love, yes. I love that. Stand up for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. So, yeah, that's. Uh... Yeah. Sometimes church is boring. That's, I guess, the point. <laughs> Yeah. I have no idea if this sweet little old lady's church situation is boring or not. Um, it probably I is. absolutely probably understand is. why people do like speaking in tongues or saying they're possessed. And like, I get it because church is boring. It just is. <laughs> and so you got to spice it up. You got <laughs> to bring your own fun. Like, you got to make <laughs> your own fun. You got to spice it up. I get it. <laughs> oh it's my boring. God. I was a kid in church. I read the Bible. I was so bored. And let me tell you, Revelations is awesome. That is <laughs> comic book level cool. There, it's like you're like ten years old. It's like the whore rode the dragon. You're like, yeah, this is awesome. It's great. Shout out to Revelations. Nice. That's a good book. <laughs> I I love when people like review the Bible. Just like, yeah, what a what a chill book. <laughs> like, what a like cool work of fiction. <laughs> yeah. Like, some somebody was talking about like all of those really detailed paintings of like you know the Last Supper and all that sort of stuff, and they were like, "This is just it's fan, art, fan right? art, right? Yeah, yeah, this is just really fan amazing art. fan art." And I was like, "It yeah. is <laughs> so true. OG fan art, yeah. Like we've been making like, fan art forever. <laughs> yeah, most of it is the entire everything that is like devil related slash say is all fanfic. It's all fanfic." <laughs> It's Milton, it's Dante, it's all fanfic. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, that's awesome. I yeah. love that they liked it so much. Like, incorporate it. It's in. It's, it's the in. extended universe. Yeah. It really is. Good. Yeah. When Good Omens came out, someone was like, if I've got this correct, I think Good Omens is fanfic of fanfic of fanfic of fanfic yeah. of the Bible. I think. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh my, oh my God. They commissioned yeah, they Michael commissioned Angelo Michael to draw Angelo their fic. <laughs> exactly. That's really, good. That's really good. It's true. It's absolutely oh true. My God. And they're like, put that shit on the roof. It looks great. It looks amazing. Like, so good. Get it up it there, dude. It looks so good. It is, there's no difference to me having a rock leaf from Naruto print up on my wall. It's the same. No. <laughs> it's, it's the there same There is thing. no difference. There's no difference from when people would illustrate me being super ripped to like Adam posing like just... <laughs> like just ripped like no one you don't know what adam looked like bro you're just like no. he was ripped he was ripped and, yeah, yeah you're, they're like are you seeing this guy no wonder <laughs> no wonder there was original sin <laughs> you know like <laughs> all that shit's horny as fuck too <laughs> like, it's true you know, it's so good <laughs> 
I mean, that's pretty much, yeah, Dante's Inferno is pretty horny. He's like, yo, my girl got what the hell. I need to get her back. I'm so horned up right now. He's like, I'll fight the devil, bro. I don't even care. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah. There's oh, so many, goodness. like, statues and stuff, especially of the devil, where you're just like, why do why do why do you make him like that? Yeah, yeah. literally, I think about that every time I see an elaborate statue of Satan. I'm like, yo, oh, they knew, they knew it. They why knew, do like, you keep making well, him hot? hot. <laughs> and then people, and then people will be like, in the Bible, they say he was the most beautiful angel. And I'm like, I get it, but like, you're making a statue of him <laughs> for people to look at. Yeah. And they want people. What's the to point of making him hot? <laughs> Biblical thirst traps. Jesus. Yes. Oh my God. How did we get here? It's fine. I don't want to know. I don't want to remember. This is a Mega Mart. <laughs> oh, Mega Mart's how we got here. Yo, the Mega Mart's crazy. <laughs> oh, Mega Mart is insane. You got to go, dude. There's a statue of Satan. It's wild. <laughs> it's so, it's, he's so fit, dude. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, it was the Jesus lamb. That is how it was. I here. did this. Oh my god! You know what? I'm gonna say it. Better story. You win. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Great tangent. <laughs> good tangent. Good tangent. Oh my god. <laughs> Nick, not to heel turn, but like, what have you? What have you been up to, dude? What are you? What are you playing? What are you enjoying? Are you still on Hell Divers? I I'm still on Hell Divers. Where we've been big into Hell Divers. Uh, did they update? Did the update happen? I, th I think maybe there's been two updates. Oh my since god, the last time I'm so played. out of the loop. <laughs> um, but yeah, we we defeated the automatons. We pushed them back. They they came back with their full force. Of course they did. Uh, they're they're taking they're taking their home planet. <laughs> we're we're in the lore. We're watching the news and, and being like, <laughs> shit, they're back. <laughs> like we were there when the breaking news thing happened in game, and we were like, fuck. Oh wait, go over to the console and like run over. See That's the so fun were though. Here. It That's was awesome. yeah, for a while there was nothing there. It was like really empty. But where they've reappeared, it does look like there's space for maybe a third faction too. Mm. So that's yeah, really no. Who is no, the third there's faction? No third faction. Be? I don't there think no there will be. No, there's no. There's no third faction. No. Okay. Okay. No, that's that's propaganda and lies. It is yeah. propaganda. It is absolutely mm. propaganda. No such but. thing. No, as hell divers, we don't. It's not propaganda. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's real. propaganda from this world. <laughs> yeah. It's it's the truth. I'm yeah. I'm listen. I'm just following orders. Yeah. Right. It's for super. Super Earth, Earth has never lied, not once. Super mm. Earth has never lied Ever. to me. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah 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 we've been most we've of us don't live long enough to find out anyway so it's fine <laughs> I don't worry myself with it. Oh God no. Oh God. No. <laughs> mm -mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's mostly been that and like work. I, I'm a very, like I said, here to here to upset the rumors that I might be a, a cool person. Uh, I just, I, I just look cool. I don't. You are. Cool. I don't do shit. Shut the fuck up. Nick's very. Been cool. playing D and D. That's uh, that's about it. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, Hellions being back has been like, or like being back. back but like yeah. <laughs> playing hellions for a single hour has got me through this entire week in all my <laughs> conversations i'm like we we did something we did we did do i something, was my boy we? for an hour yeah and i'm so happy about it yeah we were saying during pre-show we're like uh, uh we've been playing a game called hellions it's like a time loop game and it's super fun uh, and at a certain point, we were like, oh, let's swap from D&D &D into Pathfinder, Pathfinder 2E. And like half of us had done Pathfinder and half of us hadn't. Um, and at the time that we like had to take a break for a while, uh, we hadn't played enough, I don't think, for the people that had never played Pathfinder to really understand it. It's, it's fun. I like it a lot. But I don't like you have so many feats in Pathfinder, and I, I do not recall what they all do at a glance. There's so many you know? numbies. Oh my god! There's so just many like numbies. So much going on. Really fun. Um, the way that you can, the way that you can mix and match and create like a little Gorbo weirdo is great. Um, but uh, yeah, instead of just coming back in hot, <laughs> it was determined 
that um that we should do like a little two three four shot um and try to remember how to play <laughs> yeah and like who our characters are and what they're doing yeah in the grand scheme of things so yeah um it's but like for instance one of the feats which was so funny uh that dukes pulled out was like yo i work in like conspiracy theories and stuff and she was literally just like so i have a feat if this is my active investigation which it now is <laughs> is this a red herring <laughs> do we need to be paying attention to this because we're so bad at just like we gotta look at this thing and it's like not important at all and like it's like oh our dm is just like you gotta <laughs> come on guys it's, and we're like yeah. no shut up we're talking <laughs> Because this so. this like short thing that we're doing also has like kind of an escape room vibe. I was gonna say so, like we're in an air right now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. like like some of us were like, oh, I investigate the rock, and other people were like, I jump on the rock, I throw stuff at the rock, and I was like, DM, please, can I? <laughs> Do we need to? Be can I stare at this rock for long enough that I figure out whether or not this rock even fucking matters? I'm begging you, and I love that I have that ability in Pathfinder because that doesn't exist in D&D. And the answer was yes. We do need to look at the rock. Yeah, so. the answer was yeah. what y'all are doing right now, waste of time. But yes, the rock is important. Great. Great. So, so glad to know that. It's useful. Can I, can I pitch something to you two that I think you would enjoy? Yeah. And um, I think you should focus on this instead. Um, last year, at Orbital Dropkick <clears throat> on uh twitter posted what i think might be the best rpg ever called <laughs> goblin with a fat ass in which <laughs> you and your friends yeah. play goblins with fat asses okay and you must achieve objectives but character creation is completely random and right now with the two of you mm -hmm. i'd like to really quickly just make your goblins um if cool. you could either pretend make up a number or um roll Okay. If you think um, my dice are not always within arm's reach, you are absolutely incorrect. <laughs> I would love to create goblins with you. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, Nick, we'll start with you first while Dodge Oh, okay, here we go. I oh, got him. Yeah, yeah, no, roll, we're, we're prepped. Yep. <laughs> please roll a 1d6. Cool. Yep. It's a four. All right. Uh, you have a green dump truck. Dodger? Amazing. <laughs> uh, 1d4? 1d6. D6, D6. Oh, 1d6. Okay. Four. Uh, you also have a green dump truck. Okay, great, great. I like how yeah. if, if if you roll a if you roll a one, you have a firm handful. Uh, if you have a two, it's a bubble butt. Three is thick stack of pancakes. Four, the juggernaut, and six is Terminator. But if you roll a six, you can add a plus one and get oh no. Uh, so that's you know that's the thing. All right. <laughs> okay. How did you get your ass? Please roll a one d six. Okay, a two. Long years in the Goblin Wars is what you got. You have skills stabbing, biting, and spitting. Nick, please. Great. Five. Five. Blessed by an enthusiastic nymph. Your skills are nature, alchemy, and skinny dipping. Obviously. <laughs> uh, if, 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 if you could, please roll a 1d8. Oh, eight. I had to count the sides for three. a Three. A three. You are a barbarian. Your skills are intimidation, athletics, I did and go competitive to war. eating. Yeah. You, did you go were to in a war. war. You're, this checks out for you. Yeah. Yeah. I got five again. Five. Priest. Knowledge, goblin religion, gardening, and trading cards are your abilities. <laughs> trading cards. Mm -hmm. I am a skinny dipping trading card playing priest. Yes. And yep. I adore this. And now um, this is your pocket contents for the mission. Your <laughs> items that you have on hand. 1d6, please. Okay. Five. Five. Dukes, you have oddly sized key, a bottle of oil, flammable, and a jar of ball bearings. Okay. Mm hmm. One. You have a fabulous hat, a stethoscope, tape, screwdriver, bottle of orc liqueur, uh, antiseptic, possibly drinkable. I feel it. like this is genuinely the character that I would have made anyway, yeah, given these options. The drunk deck building priest. <laughs> That is completely it. And then from that point on, oh everything else you do is the, the story, and that's all random, too. So you would roll 1d6 to see 
who you're trying to rob from, the rich person you're going to rob from. Mm. And it could be like the mayor or a sweatshop fashion icon or a fireworks factory magnate. Uh, then you roll location and it's like, it could be a secret underwater base or a luxurious mansion. And then it's like, why are we, or like, what are we robbing? And it could be big honking gold bars or the world's most expensive dog, things like that. And then yeah. it's like, okay, and what guards are there? And you roll for the guards and it could be like, you roll a three and it's vicious anti-goblin attack wyverns. Like it could be, and it's just all random. I love that. And then you just go. That and sounds great. Again, that's on at Orbital Dropkick made that last year. And it's great. Good stuff. I love that love shit. It. I have yet that's... to play it, but I want to so badly. Yeah. No, that's so fun. And I want fan art. Oh. I want to make all the fan art of just big ass goblins. <laughs> just like, <laughs> let's go get them. It would be one of those, you know, you know um, those like goofy comic strips that people make where they're like the campaign that starts serious but winds up ridiculous yeah. and the campaign that starts ridiculous and winds up serious like we'd start being like i'm a goblin with a big old patoot and at the end nick and i would be acting out like <laughs> yeah like holding uh, one yeah, of us like, dying <laughs> go on without me i can't <laughs> how are we ever supposed to get through this without your fat ass <laughs> like <laughs> Uh, yeah, instead of, instead yes. of holding Dodger as Dodger dies, you're just cupping her butt cheeks. <laughs> like, <laughs> They're so firm. <sighs> really is a nice handful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this would be like way up our alley. That's it. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Okay, yeah. so we've got no, two great. campaigns now. we got two campaigns going. I'm so proud of us. We've done really good work here today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what are we meeting for these? Right? Uh, I, my, like, Thursday nights are free. Uh. <laughs> I have to do the Peppa Pink one shot, and then I'm wide open. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that is looming. It's sitting right here. Peppa's face has been sitting on my shoulder staring at me. I I don't think I've told you our tattoo shop is covered in Peppa Pig. We have so much Peppa Pig shit. Can you at the take a picture shop. for me? We have a little. People are now calling it our like Peppa Shrine, <laughs> uh, and it's just one of our artists just like really likes pigs, but like just likes Peppa Pig. So everyone keeps bringing her Peppas. I love that. And by Peppas, I'm or everyone. I mean like us, <laughs> right? Yeah, so, like we have the just people who just decorated. can't stop committing to the bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we have just gradually like covered the tattoo shop or like just a part of it in like, and people are like, "Oh my god, Peppa! Yeah, she's a queer icon. It makes so much sense <laughs> that she would be here for my tattoo." <laughs> like, <laughs> Peppa, she hates like everyone loves it. Like, Let's there's go. Been zero complaints. <laughs> We've got like band aids in the washroom, like. <laughs> I love that so much. Her, her and Astarian are sitting on a little shelf together with a little squi out. like squishables baby. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're like they're a family. They're a family. We're not right. Yeah, they're a family. Yeah, leave them. You alone. want the details? There are none. <laughs> they're just. It's obviously this is a family portrait. And obviously. Don't ask questions. <laughs> I also need a picture of that. Speaking of portrait, yes, no, I, I, I'll, I want to see next, that next time I'm at the shop. I I will send it over. Um, Nick. At the, like, near the end of all of our podcast episodes, uh, we ask our guest, without prepping them ahead of time, I'm so sorry. We got told off by Charlie for this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we ask our guest uh, to suggest something to chat as homework. Something that you think everybody should give a shot to. Something, something that they, it can be something to watch, something to read, something to experience. Whatever. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, we we always need new soldiers. Uh, for, in in for hell divers, divers, of course. Yeah. Hell divers. No. Um. I mean, like, I've I've just so so much been enjoying like Dungeon Meshi, Delicious in Dungeon. Like, I so we didn't good. talk about this at all. But like, man, if if y'all haven't watched Delicious in Dungeon, you should you should do it. You should do it. Yes, it's the manga's just, also great. It's just so good like uh yeah that's like the kind of world building that i just adore speaking mm -hmm. of like all our world building and stuff it's like yeah you don't need to do homework you're just in the world with them you're in and it. like learning yeah and like it's uh yeah god that's yeah. so true they drip feed you information about how the world works at like the perfect pace 
in Dungeon yeah. Meshi because it feels so like the frame, the elevator pitch of Dungeon Meshi is it's a bunch of people in a dungeon. It feels it feels kind of D&D ish. It's a bunch of people in a dungeon. And when they kill monsters, they eat them. And there's like food porn of making the food and them eating yeah. it. And it's always delicious. And and that's it. They eat monsters. They eat monsters. They're having a great time. Like, it's great. But it's so much more than that. <laughs> yeah. It's so good, dude. Yeah. 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 And it's, like, wholesome and also, like, extremely violent. And, like, I love I love it. Yeah. It's done by Trigger, so the, the animation is great. Um, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. The fact that Trigger was like, let us do this largely slice of life, like, anime. Yeah. Uh, and then really pull out all the stops. And- <laughs> A battle's gonna happen because this is still D and D. Yes, adjacent. Exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, it's so good. It's so good. There's a new episode. I think I want to go watch it. I know I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> we should have watched it last night, but I think that's when we tried to watch Discovery, and we we're like, I can't. oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. <laughs> Just like, peace out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, Nick. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd thank yeah, you so much for having me. Um, we've talked uh. a lot about uh, or mentioned in passing your tattoo shop. Would you like to tell everybody where your ta- what your tattoo shop is and, and what sure. you do and how they can find you and all that? Um, well, I'm, I'm Nick Terhorst on here and on like Twitter and Blue Sky. But my main account for like all my tattoo work is Nick.tattoos over on Instagram. Um, you can find my tattoo shop also at so far so good to, but also, uh, so far so good tattoo.com, uh, will take you there. And yeah, I'm based out of Toronto, uh, Ontario. So it is, you know, Canada vibes, uh, but it's a really easy city to come into. Just saying, I guessed around <laughs> a little bit. I have like a mailing list and stuff, but d- genuinely the easy, I, I hate guesting. So genuinely the easiest way to like get work for me would be like, if you're ever in Toronto, it's a pretty cool city. I do like it here. I'm very biased. Um, but yeah, yeah, like, yeah, we're, we're in a super cute neighborhood. The shop's really cute, queer friendly. Um, yeah, like it's, I, I like it. I like tattoos. Uh, yeah. That's, they're pretty cool. I got a couple, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely go check out Nick's Instagram and stuff. Uh, Nick has like a really unique tattoo style, I think, and does I, it really, really cool. I work. unsurprisingly do a lot of D and D character portraits and stuff. I was about to say, uh, uh, yeah. shout out. It looks great. Nick dot oh, tattoos. Yeah. Way. Go there. There's a few Asterians cool in there. There's just, I'm, I'm officially out of Asterian pieces uh, <laughs> that are in my docket. <laughs> and I would like to remedy that. Um, send, send me. <laughs> More Asterians. <laughs> More Asterians. Line up, dude. <laughs> I, I require it. Uh, it's become my new lifeblood. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, another thing that we wanted to make sure to mention is the game that Jesse and I have uh, been yes. producing. Gestalt, Steven Zinder, now has a release date. May 21st, there's a trailer that Jesse's team worked super hard on that turned out amazing. Um, yeah, that looks great. You can go and watch. We've linked it in lots of different places on our socials. Um, but something- I'm going to stick it in the beginning of this video. I don't know. No one can stop me. <laughs> That's it's true. It's going to be on the bottom. You I'm can do whatever you want. No yeah. stop me. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> It's As I there. knock down my backdrop <laughs> right at the end. <laughs> um, yeah, and as always, when, when games come out, if you check it out and it seems like something that you're interested in, please wishlist it on Steam. It might seem like that doesn't help a lot, but it actually helps so much at the time that the game releases. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, if you want to if you wanna check it out, uh, the team's been working super, super hard on it, and we're really excited for the game to come out. So, thank you. Yes. In advance. Uh, Jesse, is there anything else that we want to say? Anything that you need to say or want to shout out? That I need to say? Thanks again for stopping by. We love having you here, whether you're watching live or on the VOD. And uh, hey, we'll, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Baby. We'll be here Thanks. next Friday. Take care of yourselves and have an amazing weekend. So long. Mm-hmm. Bye bye. Yeah, yeah. You know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse, and Dodger. What up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse.
Jesse and Dodger So give them a follow And see what the geek and this are all about Yo, it's the weekend Yeah, it's time to geek out Let it begin Go on, stream and shout It's Jesse and Dodger So give them a follow Number one geek podcast Without a doubt Yo, another end of another long week Got a job and a kid I know that you all beat So take a second, grab a drink and vibe While we catch you up in just a matter of time On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing If you're nerdy like us Then you know you should tune in Thank you for sharing our world with us Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up Yo, it's Come the weekend Yeah, it's time to geek out Let it begin Go on, stream and shout It's Jesse and Dodger So give them a follow Number one geek podcast Without a doubt